Good morning in this charming city of Istanbul. Today we're taking you around town, exploring to see what we can do and eat with just $50. First things first, we want to change our 50 US dollar to about 500 Turkish lira because that is the current exchange rate which is about 10. So if you watch our previous video, we took you around Singapore with just $50. But this time, there's the two of us, so it's double the fun. So while in Turkey, we're going to take you to our very first stop which is Turkish breakfast. I'm so hungry, let's go! Let's eat, let's eat. Our first stop to our $50 a day tour was Lade's Menemen for breakfast a popular destination for traditional Turkish breakfast located just right off of the major tourist walking street, Istiklal. The excitement grew as we knew it would be great according to one of our favorite food bloggers, Mark Weens. We entered the small, quaint, understated restaurant and took a seat upstairs on the upper level, away from the crowds, as well as the kitchen with all the chefs cooking up the daily specials. We reviewed the pretty extensive menu before ordering a chai and coffee while we waited for our main dishes to arrive. Alright, our tea and coffee is here and they're like the miniature size. <laughs> Kitty meal! <laughs> I love it. So you got the regular chai and you put some sugar in it. Yes. And then we also have the Turkish coffee. Yeah. Bitter. It's very bitter, but it's also sweet too. <laughs> it's very interesting because Turkish coffee has this like grainy texture. And I feel like I'm eating like a, a chocolate powder or something. Our order shortly arrived and completely filled our entire table. The server brought over a side of baguette, cheese, creams with honey, olives, and pickles. Everything looked absolutely delicious. Okay, so this is my scrambled egg casserole I order with chicken. It looks so good. And we weren't joking, this is a lot of food for just two people, but let's eat. And what they do is, they take the egg mixture, it's very light, put it on top, yeah. <laughs> such a messy eater. So good. We broke our bread and dipped it into the menemen of thick, creamy, and protein-filled scrambled eggs. The side dishes of creams and honey veggies were standout, pairing well with the main dish. A perfect way to start the day with a local Turkish experience. <laughs> Are you full? I'm so full, I don't even know how you finished it. <laughs> so the portions here runs bigger than usual. It's definitely family style. It's enough to share among a family of four. Our total is 110, which means it's about $11 or $5.50 per person. So I think we're starting off pretty good. So let's pay and let's get out of here. Oh my god, I'm so full. Let's walk down Istanbul Street to walk this off. So when you're in Istanbul, the first thing that comes up to mind is Istanbul Street. Because this place is basically like Times Square. It's one of the most popular tourist attractions because all the shopping can be done right here on this one mile, no, this three mile street. Is it really three miles? I don't know, I'm making it up. It seems pretty far though. It's definitely at least a 20 to 25 minute walk if you're just taking your time. Yeah, so down here you can find a lot of eateries, restaurants, and many more small streets that paves off from Istiqal Street. But on the main street itself, there's plenty of shopping. Large department stores, all of your famous shopping brands can all be done on this place. There's also vendors that sell things on the street like chestnuts, corn, and even simit, which is kind of like the Turkish bagel. So what is our next pit stop? So right now we're still walking down Istikal Street and we're headed to Galata Tower, which is one of the oldest towers in the world. And we're gonna go and check it out. You are so nice. You are very nice. Welcome to Istanbul. Istanbul love you. 
My name is Mehmet. I wait you here every day. It's a tram. It runs down Istakal Street from Taksim Square to somewhere else. Yeah, it's a pretty popular tourist mm. attraction and it's really iconic because it runs right in the middle of the busiest street in this area, which is Istakal Street. So, question for you. If this is your first time in Istanbul, would you recommend staying at one of these hotels on the main walking street? Personally, I would say no. <laughs> a lot of people say that you should stay near the historical side, which is where the Blue Mosque and Hagia Sophia is. It's because it's a little bit quieter and it's a little bit safer. Here on Istiqlal Street, it's very rowdy and you can actually hear everything. We're on the third floor and we can hear a whole bunch of people yelling after the bars. We have some clips about that, so you can check it out. But even at nighttime, this place is, like we said, coming alive and you just want to make sure that you can get a good night's rest or else you'll have to use earplugs and eye masks. <laughs> so when the crowd gets really rowdy past midnight, it gets also really alive to the point that you might not get a good night's sleep. So if you are considering staying at one of the hotels along the street itself, I highly recommend maybe somewhere off the street so that you can have, you know, a Some more peace and quiet. Peace and quiet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna keep walking. Let's go. Okay, we made it to the Galata Tower and I think it's reaching close to midday. It's very packed down here, full of life and we're blessed with the perfect weather today because it's not too hot, not too cloudy, just right for lighting for the perfect picture with the tower. And this place is so nice because a lot of people come here, sit down at a cafe, have some lunch or some tea and it's just a great place to hang out and you can have a nice view of the tower. I mean, it's probably the highest point if you go above the tower in this area of Belugu. Belugu? Bayoglu? <laughs> Bayoglu. So if you go up there, the views are probably really stunning. But uh, once again, we're in tight budget today. So we're gonna skip going up the tower because there's also a long line right now. So long. So we're just gonna take some pictures of this beautiful tower and get going. At close to 206 feet tall stands one of the oldest and most prominent landmark in the world, the Galata Tower. Originally built by the Byzantines at the highest point of the city as a watchtower detecting fires to spot enemies, it was destroyed during the Crusade War and later rebuilt by the Genoese as an extension of the Wall of Galata, renaming it the Tower of Jesus. Today, this magnificent Romanesque structure has been restored and houses a museum and exhibits. Entry costs 100 lira and 25 more for an audio guide. There are elevators that take you to the top, but there are still three more floors you have to climb by stairs to reach the panoramic terrace. All right, guys, so we just finished our Istakal walking street and just leaving Galata Tower. And now we're heading on a tram to take us to the old town district area that has the Blue Mosque and Hagia Sophia. <laughs> Sorry, I keep looking down because we're walking down a really steep slope. <laughs> Don't fall! So another fun fact about Istanbul is that in the main historical area, there's a lot of hills and slopes. And the buildings and historical buildings are all built literally on the slope. It kind of reminds me of San Francisco. As huge advocates of public transit, we highly recommend you get the Istanbul card. This thing is a lifesaver because we got it on our first day and it really allows you to get around the city of Istanbul really easily. You can jump on the tram, you can jump on the metro, and it's super easy to use. 
We got on our first day, it was 20 Turkish Lira, 13 for a deposit, and then the seven you can use. And you kind of just top up as you go. It's super easy to use, and it's so much better than jumping on cabs. We had to get our individual card because of the coronavirus right now. You have to register the card number based on your passport and your HES code. Yep. So the first time when we got our card, we couldn't tap through the gantry because we have to register the card for each person. It was very difficult because the whole sign up process just really didn't work out for us and we had Wi-Fi issues. That's something to take note, so let's keep going. It was a short walk from Galata Tower and we finally got out of the narrow streets to this stunning view. We arrived at the Karakoi tram station that would take us to our next destination. We tapped our trusty cars from Istanbul cart and walked into the station to wait for the next arriving tram. This ride would cost us roughly 4 Turkish lira, which is roughly 40 cents at the time of this filming. After a few minutes, the tram arrived and we rode over the Galata Bridge and managed to get a glimpse of the amazing historical area we were traveling through. just got off the Sultanahmet tram station and we are headed to go check out the Blue Mosque, so let's go. So Blue Mosque, Hagia Sophia are all located on one central section and you can actually walk between them. The first two mosques I believe are free if you wanted to, you can actually book a guided tour for like a tourist pass and that's about 75 euros. So you remember when I tell you that we have the best luck whenever we visit all these biggest attractions in the world? It's happening right now because the Blue Mosque is under construction on the facade. And this happened to us in Vietnam when we visit the Pink Church. This happened to us in the Big Ben when we visit London. And now Istanbul with the Blue Mosque having a facelift. Located in the heart of Istanbul, Sultanahmet Square, you will find the Blue Mosque, a historical landmark in Istanbul that was built between 1609 and 1616 that attracts over 4 million people a year. The structure is iconic in a special shade of blue and also houses six minarets that is visible from far areas of Istanbul. Upon entering, you will see the stunning layout and structure that is filled with handmade ceramic tiles as well as stained glass windows. However, due to construction while we were there, we were unable to see all the stunning details of this special mosque. In addition, pillars were set up holding the construction scaffoldings, and the upper levels were also closed off, and we were only able to enjoy the lower level interior. Pro tip, you must remove your shoes when entering the mosques, so be prepared to take them off. So now we're done with the Blue Mosque, we're going to check out the next closest attraction, which is walking distance to the Hagia Sophia Mosque. Let's go! Across Sultanahmet Park, you will see the magnificent Hagia Sophia Grand Mosque. We were amazed at all the people admiring the beauty from the exterior and knew this was the most picturesque spot to take a photo. Formerly built as one of the largest Christian church in the world back in 537 AD, this cathedral famously held Byzantine imperial ceremonies such as coronations. The place of worship was then converted into a mosque in the 15th century under the Ottoman Empire. We made our way through the crowds and excitedly through the grand entrance, only to find people waiting to enter. Once again, you were required to take off your shoes prior to entering. Luckily, there were tons of cubbies provided for us. The interior of the Hagia Sophia is truly one of a kind. Dark emerald carpet covers the floors that used to be stones, and studding chandeliers hang from the tall ceilings illuminating the room. Above the lights, large circular inscriptions written in Arabic symbolizing order ran around the circumference of the space. The dome is particularly intricate, as it is one of a kind with a special spherical triangular design. It is certainly a must-see when you are visiting Istanbul. Alright, we've just finished exploring the Hagia Sophia Mosque. It was really beautiful. 
definitely much more exciting than our experience in the Blue Moss. Well, it was under construction and everything was closed off and you really couldn't see anything. And we could tell from the outside, but we didn't know what the inside was going to be like. I know. So it's been such a great day and we're on a roll and the weather is nice. So now we're going to go for some lunch. For breakfast, we took your Turkish breakfast. So we thought that for lunch, it will be nice to take you to some seafood. Lunch at Balik Sabatin was a perfect place for us as it was super cute and located a short walk from the touristy areas. We wanted to have a light lunch so seafood, Turkish style it was, in contrast to our carby breakfast. The menu was on the smaller side with only roughly 20 to 30 hot and cold dishes and of course, fresh fish of your choosing. So today's lunch is going to be a little bit different. We're going with a whole Mediterranean style, which is actually also Turkish because Turkey is uh, connected to the Mediterranean Sea, which is similar to Greece as well. So there's a lot of influences between and usually people think about shish kebab or baklava, but this is totally different and it's still also Turkish. So we're so excited to try something a little bit different and also showcase different types of cuisine in Turkey. We did get the fried zucchini with yogurt, which is uh, a hot appetizer, and they come with complimentary bread and a chili paste slash chili sauce, which looks really nice. For our main, we've ordered a snapper. I'm not sure how they're gonna cook it, so we'll see what happens. I'm sure. I'm sure they serve it whole, probably. <laughs> the grilled whole. Yeah, we're gonna quizzes. share. We're gonna share the snapper. We're gonna share the snapper because it's a light lunch. So let's dig in and see how it tastes. Our food arrived and everything looked super fresh and super tasty. The skin of the fish was flaky and the meat was super delicate. <laughs> I love how there's like a potato, a little salad, some lemon, and a full fish. It's a whole fish. Yeah, sure. Let's dig in. We took our time as the whole fish oh. had bones, but the flavor was just amazing. <laughs> wow, For that's you. a nice fillet. Enjoy. <laughs> there might be some bones, so just be careful. It's really good. We sat there in the outdoor covered patio space enjoying our meal and ended up devouring it all. Oh my gosh. We killed the fish. It was really good. It's the spot. I think we made a good choice sharing and <laughs> not ordering individual portions because it's huge. All right, guys, we got our bill, and it looks like the total is $185. So $18.50 for two people, not too bad. About $9.25 per person. Now we're gonna continue walking and head over to the Grand Bazaar, so let's go. Just a little status check, we spent about 335 Turkish lira which is about 167.5 per person. We're gonna find a nice dinner place as well as maybe get into a Turkish bath. So before that, we're gonna walk off this food at the Grand Bazaar and it's also free entry. So a lot of free things today. So we're outside in the entrance of the Grand Bazaar, one of the biggest markets in Turkey, if not the world. This place is so massive, we only have maybe two hours because it closes 6, 6.30. So let's go in and check out as much as we can. Let's go. is so massive. I feel like I'm in a labyrinth, maze, all mixed into one. Best part is that it's covered. Yeah, it's really cool because whenever you look up at this historical structure, it's very beautiful because it makes you feel like you're in a tunnel, but also a lot of hand-painted motifs which are 
very interesting, very intricate. There's also a lot of different vendors here and we just can't wait to walk around and check it out. So let's go. I can't believe it. I mean, there's people selling things from clothes to accessories to jewelry. Souvenirs and trinkets and a paradise for all their knockoff products and clothes. There was a whole section dedicated to like leather, I think. So Yeah, like any brands you can find out, like literally you can find it right here. So we were planning to spend about an hour or two here just walking around and checking things out. Since we are on a budget today of $50, we were thinking of actually buying nothing because that would definitely blow our budget. I mean, there's a lot to see here, but after a while, because of the stores are not categorized in any specific way, it gets a little bit repetitive. Yeah. And the store owners here are all very friendly for sure because they want you to buy your stuff. And speaking on the terms of buying, if you're interested in anything here, make sure to always haggle before you buy it. So we've been to a lot of markets around the world. The Grand Bazaar feels more like a historical shopping experience because of the structure, the history, the sights and sounds, and just the atmosphere in general. And I would definitely prefer this than going to the malls where the items are just more a little bit generic because even though they are selling name brand knockoff items, it just feels like this is part of like the culture and just a more authentic experience. Yeah, so just to conclude our time down here, we spent zero dollars. We're going off to the next pit stop. That was wild. It was so crazy in there people are really friendly and a lot of smoking <laughs> too much smoking for my comfort we're starving right now so we're gonna head to dinner well since we kind of saved up a whole ton and didn't spend too much for our first few activities we're splurging on our last two which is dinner and then probably a turkish bath for our final meal of the day, we decided to try Miban, a trendy restaurant serving breakfast and kebabs, only a short 10 minute walk away from Grand Bazaar. It was a small restaurant with two levels as well as outdoor seating. With over 2,200 Google reviews, this was a place we had to try out. We were seated on the main level, quickly reviewed the extensive menu, and decided to order. For an appetizer, we ordered the Meze Tabagi. It was simply a meze platter with all of your popular dishes like hummus, yogurt, sliced meats, and other specialty items, and of course, a side of pita bread. Pita, 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 pita. Mm. For our mains, Bernard ordered the tabuk shish, which is chicken kebabs paired with some rice, grilled peppers, and onion salad. The chicken was super tender and juicy. Weedy ordered the iskender kebab. This dish is popular in Turkey consisting of sliced doner kebab meat topped with hot tomato sauce over pita bread and then slathered with melted sheep's butter and yogurt. Overall, it was a very lovely meal to end the day. The service was great and everything was super tasty. We so full right now and then they were like, there's complimentary tea, do you want some? We're like, complimentary? Yes! It's a nice treat. We got our check. <laughs> and the moment of truth is that we spent 282 Turkish lira, which, which means we spent about 14 per person. That's not bad. $14 per person is not bad at all. So hopefully we're staying within budget, but we will go back home. And we will tally everything up to see what we actually spent today. And hopefully we didn't pass our $50 budget. All right, guys, we're not home. Where are we be? We decide to splurge and get hammam, which is a Turkish bath massage or a Turkish bath ritual. I'm super excited. For one hour, you get like a little scrub, you get a little massage. 
part of it is also that this is definitely something super Turkish. We wanted to end with something super relaxing and super different than anything we've ever done before. So looking forward to this. So we made a reservation and we're just sitting here until we're getting called to go in. Hopefully it's not too much longer. We'll let you know how it is. A few moments later. <laughs> We're all done. <laughs> How do you feel? Relax. I'm gonna go sit down now. <laughs> <laughs> You're wrapped up like a baby. <laughs> I'm so relaxed right now. So we just finished our very first virgin Turkish bath. And it was one of the best experience in my life because I've been to a lot of bathhouse around the world like onsen in Japan or like a Korean bathhouse but never quite like this. After I got changed, wearing nothing, only just a towel, um, I was beat by my attendant, showered me with hot water and sitting down. And then he put me on a marble slab which is heated. And right after he pulled me to a bath, like he put me in a corner and started giving me a bubble bath, scrubbing my head, scrubbing every part of my body. So I got like a, a head rub, a, like a neck rub, a shoulder rub, a foot rub, and like now we're just sitting here and chilling with my scented towel, which smells amazing with mint. And they're making us some hot tea and just relaxing down here. This is something that you need to experience. Definitely once in a lifetime experience. You have to try it at least once. Oh my god, you got like one of the best. Did you already give your final thoughts? I did. Okay, because what I wanted to say in addition to what Bernard said is that that was like the most ultimate bubble bath I've ever had. <laughs> I think the technique they have is just so crazy. I've never seen it before. And granted, it's our first time, but that was so fun. Anyone who ever comes to Istanbul or Turkey in general must try a hammam Turkish bath. Seriously. I said the exact same thing. <laughs> That's great! And we made a new friend, waiting. Uh, <laughs> did you enjoy your bath? Yeah, it was great. <laughs> awesome. What a day. We finally made it home to our Airbnb after like what? 16, 18 hours all I, day? I don't even know. I look so tired and I feel so tired right now. But I had so much fun and exploring Istanbul this way is really exciting and also very thrilling because I want to find out how much did we make in terms of our $50 challenge. I know, it was such a hard thing to do, but I think we did it because honestly, we failed last time <laughs> by going over. So this time we like made sure we stuck to our budget. All right, starting from the top, we had breakfast, an authentic Turkish breakfast, which was 110 at Lade's minimum. We walked along the main walking street on Istikol Street. And we also visited Taksim Square and walked all the way to Galeta Tower, which is zero dollars. free. And then we did the tram to the other side, which was 20 Turkish lira per person, purchasing the Istanbul cart. And then the Blue Mosque and Hagia Sophia was also free. Yay. <laughs> and then lunch at the fish place was 185. Then the Grand Bazaar was free. <laughs> and then we went to dinner at Mivan. Yes. It was 282. And then finally our Turkish bath, our hammam Turkish bath. Oh my god, I'm so relaxed from it. Yeah, it was 380. So that means our total comes up to be drum roll, please. Nine ninety seven. So that's basically for four ninety eight fifty per person. <laughs> oh my god! So it was like literally under fifty dollars. Yeah, we actually did it. Oh, like yay. just just skimmed it. Just so close. All right. So if you like more videos like these, us showing you around any city we visit for a limited budget of fifty dollars, let us know in the comments down below. So my name is Weedy and Bernard and this is Explore, Explore As, As We, we Go. Go. Till next time. <laughs>